We begin with breaking news. And that breaking news involves the latest developments in El Dorado County, where we continue to track the Caldor fire. We've seen some new fire activity near Kybers today. Live Copter 3 is up over the scene near Highway 50. And this is, of course, part of the Caldor fire, which is still threatening 30,000 buildings. It's burned for more than two weeks now. Uh, crews have been successful in, in protecting some of the most populated areas of El Dorado County. And when we say that, Lisa, we're talking about like, I mean, really precise drops of retardant that have just basically gone right to the edge of some neighborhoods and saved them. Yeah, saved entire neighborhoods like Christmas Valley is when the Caldor fire has burned 204,000 acres southeast of Pollock Pines and southwest of South Lake Tahoe. For perspective, that's more than 300 square miles. And just into our KCRA 3 newsroom, we've learned that some evacuation orders have now been downgraded to warnings. That's good news. So this applies to parts of North Camino and Pollock Pines, including the areas of north of Highway 50, west of Sly Park, south of Slab Creek and east of Larson Drive. Still, though, tens of thousands of people remain under evacuation orders. This map only includes the orders within California. It doesn't include the ones on the other side of the state line in Nevada. And you can see the orders stretch south into Amador County, out into Alpine County near Kirkwood. Once again, the orders north of Highway 50, though, were just downgraded to warnings. We've got live team coverage for you on the fire and its impacts. We begin with Chief Meteorologist Mark Finan mapping out the fire and tracking the wind. Mark and showing you where we're seeing activity during the course of the day today. Here is the footprint. It really hasn't changed that much since the day yesterday, but there are some areas that are burning. We showed you some from live copter three. You see this little area right in here north of Highway 50, not too far from Whitehall. That is one area that is currently burning, and we're also seeing an area near the Wrights Lake area. That's north of Highway 50 right in here. And so if you're in, let's say Placerville or other parts of El Dorado County and you're seeing big smoke plumes that are close. Those two areas are very active this afternoon. The south end of the fire doesn't appear to be burning as hot today. There is still a lot of smoke coming off of this and there is some fire south of Highway 88 and along Highway 88. But this area again not burning as hot as it was yesterday and the area up around Tahoe once again progressing to the east but staying out of the neighborhoods. It still looks as though it's going to go on the back side of Heavenly. That's Heavenly right there. It may travel on the back side of Heavenly and go toward the state line. And let me show you the winds that we have this afternoon. It's a steady southwesterly wind in most areas, but the thing I find curious is this northwesterly wind reported at the airport, a breeze coming this way. That's great news because if you have a wind going this way and then up the slope, that'll help to keep those flames away from those neighborhoods at South Lake Tahoe. Back to you. All right, thank you so much. And let's go back up to live. Copter 3 has been flying overhead most of the day today. We were over the Markleyville area around 1 o'clock this afternoon. And last week, thick smoke prevented air firefighting operations at this same point. But since then, nearly two dozen helicopters and three air tankers have been dumping thousands of gallons of water and retardant on this fire at this location. To get day, Live Copter 3 had to keep its distance from the fire to make way for firefighting planes and helicopters. We saw several helicopters flying over the area, which is great news for those efforts to contain the fire and put out flames. And there's also an effort underway right now to make sure that Heavenly Ski Resort is protected there at Lake Tahoe. The resort is near the east end of the fire and KCRA 3's Brittany Hope joins us live now with the latest. And uh, Brittany, uh, tell us what's happening there near Heavenly. Yeah, that's right, Brian, and it's not only just the resort itself. It's really the entire neighborhood here. We did a sweep before going live and all the homes here are protected. There is no flames that has gotten over the ridge and into this neighborhood. So I really want to make it clear that people who live in the heavenly neighborhood, their homes are safe right now. Want to show you though. So we're here on the lower parking lot at heavenly. This is going to be the site of the new incident command center here for the fire because fire crews say that this fire burning behind heavenly is really becoming the front of this fire. So this 
this is where at least 1,000, 2,000 firefighters are going to be sleeping. We have you zoomed in right now. Two semis just arrived here from sleeping companies. It's mobile lodging, so we're pretty sure that is the housing inside of there that will soon be set up where firefighters are going to be sleeping. And we know they are working brutal shifts, working hour after hour to protect homes. It looks like they do have some bedding at least to sleep on tonight, and we are just so grateful for their work. I do want to bring you up now to the slopes here. Smoke, I mean, hour by hour. We've been here since around 2 o'clock has been getting thicker and it's now raining ash. But this is really what you're looking at. The fire is burning south of Heavenly right now. So we asked fire crews really what they're worried about going into tonight and what tactics they're going to use to make sure this fire does not get to Heavenly. What we're concerned about is this wind, wind direction is going to stay this way probably till 11 o'clock or so. And then we'll have the, the cool air come off the top of the mountain and we'll get this downslope winds. Now that can do a couple things. It can push the fire back on itself or it could push the fire back towards the community. So we really want to be ready with structure protection and have those lines ready and uh, just be ready to engage fire. And, and talking about those lines and structure protection, a big question so many of you who live here in the South Lake area are asking is when can I return home? I did ask him about that as well. He said there's really no timeline right now. Uh, there's still active fire as we know in the area, but they did want us to reassure you that they are digging lines and working to protect homes. And again, as we have been driving through these neighborhoods over the past day or so, all the homes here in this area are standing. So again, tonight, just as the winds change, I'm sure you could see it in my hair and probably some of the ash in the camera right now. That really is the main focus for fire crews. By the end of tonight and into tomorrow morning, this parking lot behind me will be filled with bulldozers and campsites and tents and food and water. So it's been really interesting to kind of watch all of this come to life over the past two, three hours or so. Brian, Lisa. Okay, Brittany, good update there from Heavenly. Thank you. More than 50,000 people are under evacuation orders in El Dorado County. Cal Fire says the good news is most people are heeding those warnings and it's helping them make progress on the fire. One of the successful uh, successes here in, uh, in, in South Lake Tahoe was the fact that people evacuated. That got people out of their homes, onto the road, and out of the communities. That allowed our firefighters to actually fight the fire. An aggressive evacuation is going to have to continue to be a part of what we do when these wildfires occur. And so uh, while we always struggle with getting people to evacuate, these fires are not like fires we had 5, 10, 15 years ago. People need to evacuate. Heed that warning. That allows us to concentrate on the fire, save homes, do structure defense, and put the fire out. Our coverage continues in the Echo Summit area where crews are working hard to protect cabins and other structures there. KCRA 3's Lizay Mitri joins us live with more on which areas are still proving to be a bit of a challenge. Lizay? Yes, and just from our area right here on Echo Summit, we can see fire burning along the hillside. It's gotten quite a bit smoky, smoky smokier right now, so it might be hard to tell. There are some flames, um, but we've been watching this fire spread in that area over the last hour that is just south of Christmas Valley and it's burning on the east side of Highway 89. It does look like it's spreading south and then east up that hillside, which is good moving away from the homes. We've also seen a helicopter come through here twice now dropping water on that area. And then as we move north, we'll show you where that fire is burning in relation to Christmas Valley. So you can kind of see where the homes are here in the valley. And we're still seeing crews, of course, staged in that area uh, just for protection as a precaution in case uh, the fire uh, did get close. And then as we move further north, it's again, it's the the smoke has gotten a lot thicker in the last 10 minutes, but there is some smoke coming where it looks like there might be a fire just west of Christmas Valley as well. Now we want to show you what it looked like on our way here to Echo Summit. Even though the head of the Caldor fire has pushed east, already moving through this area, firefighters are still seeing flare ups along Highway 50. The wind whipped these flames around about a mile east of Sierra at Tahoe Road. 
and on Ice House Road, you can see the fire is still burning on this hillside south of Highway 50. We were watching it from this spot two weeks ago when flames had just burned over the top of the ridge. Today, we're still seeing a huge plume of smoke in that area as the fire now creeps further down the hill closer to the river. And their big concern is that strong winds through the canyon could cause that fire to jump the highway. So today they had hot shot crews and a lot of engines staged in that area trying to cut that fire off before it could become a bigger problem. Live at Echo Summit, Liz A. Mitri, KCRA 3 News. All right, Liz A., thanks for the live report. And folks in the Sly Park area are eager to return home. That's northwest of the fire. We mentioned earlier that some evacuation orders west of Sly Park have now been downgraded to warnings. And we talked with a family that's getting ready to go back home after nearly two weeks away. They only had five minutes to grab their dog, a few clothes, some pictures off the wall. And today they are very relieved after learning that their home was saved. I did a somersault, I'm 74 and a half, and I flipped. <laughs> I couldn't even believe I could do that, but yeah, we're ecstatic. Miss the little things. That's the main things, yeah. It's rough. It's time to go home. Now, the El Dorado County Sheriff's Department says there have been rumors about passes being issued for certain evacuees to return. Deputies say that is not true. They say everyone will be alerted about repopulation orders at the same time. Uh, people in the Myers area are also eager to get back to their homes, but Cal Fire says right now it's too dangerous for them. KCRA 3's Maricela de la Cruz joins us live now with the latest on the efforts to protect homes in that area. Mar Maricela? Brian, that's right. We are in Myers and no major visible damage here. But while this area looks fairly good, the same can't be said for all of El Dorado County. We spoke to a fire official and he tells us why it's difficult to get to and save every home. As more evacuations are underway, the thousands of evacuees who have been out of their homes for weeks now are sharing sentiments of uncertainty. While some homes have been saved by radiant heat barriers driving along Highway 50, other areas hit by spot fires between standing structures were not so lucky. Some of these homes are built deep into the forest and it creates a real challenge when the fire is rapidly coming towards it. How do you remove fuel loads from around that home that's deep in the forest? Wade adds that even in areas that have been saved entirely, there's no timeline as to when residents can return since sporadic damage and destruction makes for an unsafe environment for everyone. And while Myers looks fairly good, as I mentioned, no major structure damage that we've seen so far. We've driven through several neighborhoods, no major damage over the last hour. We have also noticed, as uh, our colleagues uh, Brittany and Lise mentioned, a lot more smoke in the last hour. Live in Myers, Maricela de la Cruz, KCRA 3 News. Okay, Maricela, thank you. Let's continue our team coverage and go back outside to Live Copter 3 right now. Checking in with our Live Copter 3 pilot, Dan Oppenheim. Dan, thank you so much for flying. You've uh, been flying over this fire since it started back on August 14th. So what are you seeing today? What are you noticing different today? What I'm noticing is different today is that the south and the west sides are completely clear. There's no smoke. We've got blue skies. But then as you look, all of the smoke is just blowing north and eastbound right into Tahoe. Um, over here, uh, where our camera is now, we have some uh, some fires that have popped up. Uh, luckily, they don't appear to be in populated areas, but the uh, the forest that is burning is incredibly dense, so it's causing that really uh, dark orange-looking smoke. Very interesting observations there. And yes, it's good to hear that that wind direction is continuing to be in the, the direction that they wanted for their favorable firefighting efforts today and keeping the flames burning to the northeast and away from a lot of communities, especially in the near uh, the South Lake Tahoe area. I guess it really depends on what front you're talking about. Um, compared to, let's say, yesterday, is there anything that you're noticing that's different today compared to yesterday? It seems like the entire fire over the course of not just yesterday to today, but over the last several days has just gradually shifted northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like right now the fire on the northeast edge is getting more into granite 
and into higher uh, elevations. So hopefully that uh, lack of fuel uh, caused by the granite will cause it to slow 